Welcome to the Manor Park inaugural podcast, where Stephen and Julian and I talk about everything that went on in the podcast, our favourite cars from the 90s, and the things that we would like to wear. Welcome, you lovely people. This is our first Manor Park Classics podcast and video podcast, and I am, of course, joined by two illustrious colleagues, one of which is Julian, our auctioneer. Julian, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. I mean, it's, it's great to be here <laughs> after the auction. We haven't yeah. left, have we yet? No, we haven't. No, I, I, sometimes I feel if I could ever, if sometimes I feel like I'm always in the building, you know, metaphorically, you spiritually, are omnipresent, omnipresent. Yes, yeah. that's right. But yeah, it's great to be here in the in our brand new podcast studio. It's lovely, isn't it? it sounds good. And Stephen, you've paid for it, so thanks for that. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, it's great to be here as well. So we're going to talk about today's auction briefly. You know, we're not going to bang on about it because people will have seen it on the live feed. They will have been amazed at the cars that sold, the amount of cars that sold, and also what some of the cars sold for. So we'll talk about that, but we're here just to chat about cars in general, aren't we, really? Definitely. It's oh, not yeah. just auction yeah. chat, it's no. just three car enthusiasts talking about cars in general. So Julian, if you would like to, you can take your time off, you know, you finish work now. Oh you no, want no, to. I, d- I was told we had to dress up for this. No. I've dressed up, you've dressed down. You look like you're going to read the well, news. We, you you look like? like you've come straight from the yacht club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, then I just look like a dad at a barbecue, like yeah, normal. Yeah, pretty thing. much, yeah. They're just like normal, really. Yeah. Let's talk then about the Vauxhall Nova GTE. I think for me, that was one of the stars of the show. Jules, where does the Nova for you sit in the canon of performance cars and max power, which was a great yeah. period for that? Why do you think we love Nova so much? Well, because it is a cover car. And yeah. Because obviously your nan had one, yeah. your granddad had one, your mum had one, you know, to go shopping down to Tesco or Sainsbury's or whatever it may be. Other well, supermarkets are available, of course, ladies and gentlemen. But the thing is, it, it is a bit of a poster car. You know, because although you, your nan yeah. picked you up from school, you know, in a, in like one, a merit, yeah, one litre merit, yeah. you know, uh, with the manual choke and everything like that, but you, you know, you really wanted her to pick you up in a, in a, 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 a GTE. And the other thing with the Vauxhall, of course, is they seem to GTE just about everything, didn't they? Oh, they did. Mm. And we've had a few through, haven't we, as well? Have you ever had an, either an Astra or an Over GT, Stephen, in your car career? No, I haven't. I, I would have loved one. Uh, in the 80s, uh, back in the day, I, I would have loved um, a GTE, a white GTE. Oh. That was always kind of my favourite car. I, I used to love them. And then there was a, I can't remember the exact spec of it, but there was a, if you couldn't afford a GTE, there was one down from that, wasn't it? What, which one was that? Well, do you remember there was one called the Club? Do you remember that one? Which oh, was I really remember that. And there was the SR, wasn't there? Yeah, so the SR sat underneath. That was quite the SR. That's what I'm thinking a really of, yeah. cool one called the Club. I'm sure that in post-production we can have that fly up on the screen now. Yeah, but no, that no. was a very, very cool I, car. I just feel the first Mark I Astra was a beautiful looking car. The GTE. Uh, for me, the, the, the Mark One GTE was better than the Mark Two GTE. The, f- the first is always the best, isn't it? Because yeah. they always want to tweak with them, they always want to play with them, and then yeah. it becomes more and more corporate. Whereas the first yeah. one is like, you know what? It's like the three of us just about this. It's like, why don't we make one of these? Oh, no. You know, and they're, they're just like back of a. I know you said back of a fag packet there, but you, you know what I mean? Yeah, why don't we do it like this? Yeah, go on then. Why don't we do it like this? And it just kind of happens. It just happens organically. But after that. It becomes too corporate. They think about it. It's overthought. That's that's what I feel. It's true, but value-wise, so let's have a look at that because Vauxhall's traditionally have always been behind Fords, haven't they? If you want to spend all the money on a classic car, or know you're going to have to spend all the money on a classic car, Fords are the top table, aren't they? Yes. Fords fetch stupid money. Vauxhalls have always been a little bit behind. That Nova today is catching up. Nineteen thousand pounds. I still think it was well bought by whoever's bought it. I do too, because it was such a nice car. I mean, it's that's mint a, that car. Yeah, no, we've had a really good look at it, haven't we? And. Um, it's, it's flawless, that car. It's yeah. superb, superb. So it's nothing bolt restoration, yeah. which yeah. would cost you way more than 19 grand to do oh, yeah. to that standard. Yeah. And the rest. And you just don't find them in that condition anymore, No, you do don't. You? No, you don't. We That's had one. Thing. Do you remember we had one a few months ago, a, 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 an Astra GT, all in the rally, all in the rally badges? And, yeah. Uh, that was a super car. I love that car. I think anything like that, which really takes you back to uh, the original sort of Mark 1 80s. Mm. Yeah. It, they're, they're just superb, aren't they? they uh, are. Everybody loves them. And it's great to see Vauxhall catching up on Ford. There's definitely a, a, a huge following for them. Well, that car was interesting as well, but we had that Calibra. That Calibra made strong money. Yeah, just what did that sound uh, like? DTM. That yeah. did 9,300 9, hammer. I mean, that again, really nice car. What I'm learning about the market at the moment is if it's late 80s or particularly if it's 90s, it's mm. incredibly good news. Also, if the car is stonkingly clean, great mileage, great history, Vauxhalls are getting closer and closer and closer to Ford. Yeah, I it's think, really interesting. I think there's always been, you know, 
a, a, a huge following for Vauxhalls. It's just they've historically kept under people's radar. Mm. By that I mean, I don't mean people who are into Vauxhalls, yeah. but now there's that transferability that they're actually accepted as a proper classic car. I know that sounds terrible if you've got your Vauxhall at all, but a proper classic car. No, you're right. you, 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 you know, so it's not that you've been into Vauxhalls for the last 20 years of your life. It's the fact that, oh, Calibra DTM, right, there's a rare car. Yeah. You know, 40,000 miles that car had mm. on it. You know, one of, I can't, can't remember, how many were, were left on the roads? Well, how many it, left on the if roads? If you look at the heritage of Vauxhall, Vauxhall set off as a real high quality car like a Mercedes. Oh, they were? Yeah, they yeah were, before they, GM bought them, yeah. Before, they were the cars to have. They were sort of trying to get up there, with, even with Rolls Royce. They, they made the cars of the day, didn't they? Oh, well, you know, go back to the 1930s. Exactly, yeah. that's, what, yeah. that's, that's what I'm referring yeah. to, yeah. Quality brand. Yeah, yeah, I, and they've always, for me, they've always been slightly more stunning in appearance. You know, I remember, do you remember the Opel Mantras? Yeah, uh, Opel, I've, I've, I've had them. Fanta you know, yeah. our, our good, good pet pal of mine back in the day, he had a white one, and everybody loved it. And I had um, uh, a Mark II Escort at the time, and I just loved his Opel Mantra. It was just fantastic. You'd have preferred the mantle. Of course I would, yeah, with the, yeah. the, the long yeah. hatchback. Do you he remember had, it? He had In Manta white. Envy. He did have Manta Envy. But you know the car I've always wanted but never had, and I don't think we've had one through the sale yet? Monza GT. Oh, that yes. is the car Monza. I want. So you want one of the GTs. Well, I've owned a Monza, but it was a 3 litre E from 1982. That is Crystal early. green metallic, yeah. green velour interior. Was that absolutely oh, phenomenal? Did you have a matching briefcase with that? <laughs> uh, I, 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 th I think if they'd done luggage, yeah, they, you probably would have got some kind of a taché case, like you, you know, yes. you know, very tutorial, yeah, German. very hard square, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely, yeah, all in aircraft aluminium, <laughs> you, you know, like billeted from yeah. a billet, velour interior, interior, yeah, yeah, it did, yeah, yeah it was great. Absolute cracking car. Right, other cars then that I really liked and I thought were bought well and did really well. Obviously, I've got to say it, you know I'm going to say this. Mm. Saab 93 Carlson. Now, that was estimated at 8 to 9k, which I thought was pretty fair for what it is. I thought that was good money. Mm. The owner, that's almost 13 grand that car in the end, but yeah. find another one in that condition. Yeah. Well, you've got to find another one. Boy, yeah. full stop, let, let alone find one in that <laughs> condition. I mean, that, that was an absolute. Corker of a car that was unbelievable, and I just think again that's an interesting car. So we're talking about other GM cars now. Is all of a sudden people are waking up to the fact because sort of went through a period when you could buy like a cheap nine three aero or nine five aero for not a lot of money, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden the top cars are starting to fetch significant five figure sums. And, and that's that's because they go through this cycle, don't they? They go through a cycle of just being a cheap runabout. Yeah. And they all drop to that level and people just go, ah, oh, yeah, I don't want one. You know, I'm not interested in one. So they get in the hands of people like me, probably, yeah. that are buying them for <laughs> two grand or 1,500 right. quid, running them into the ground virtually. So nothing, they, you know, to find a real nice mint one that's been cherished. Yeah. You know, they, they've not, they've gone through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight owners, haven't they? This is the problem of this. Yeah. So that Carlson we had, you know, was, was it ticked every single box, didn't it? Low ownership, low mileage, great condition. Yeah. There was no, n not a speck of rust on that one whatsoever. And they're very, you know, they're very prevalent, aren't they, for the rear arches rotting out. On well, they really are. Crazy. Yeah. That was the thing that surprised me. So that was a good car. And again, another GM car. But a car that made super strong money, I think it could have been in condition, and I think the early cars look prettier. I don't know what you think about this, Stephen. Reliant Scimitar GTE. So again, we had that estimated at 67, went for over 10 in the end. Yeah, I, again, it was a good car. It was a good, good example. Uh, again, looked stunning, stunning here in, here in the room. And, and you've just got to find the right person for the right car, haven't you? Yeah. And I always liked the, the, uh, the GTEs. And obviously, Royalty had them, Prince yeah. had. You can't uh, say... Scimitar GTE, can you? Without, without having thinking about no. Lisa Sun. Yeah. And, you know, she, and I think it's only, I, I read in the newspaper, it was, it's only in the last couple of years she's actually let that car go. Because did, didn't she kept it for uh, all that Middle time. Ridge car, I think. I'm sure she did towards the end. Yeah. She, she kept it for all that time. It was just, it, it was fantastic to see. And they have a following. Do you really Like do? everything, they have a strong following. Have you had one? Have you ever you owned What, have I had a GTE? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. do you know, I've never had. I haven't. That's I haven't. another one I've had. Have you I, really? I, said, I said that on the yeah, I said that on the roster. I bought it. And, and still, that didn't put people off. No, no, it didn't. No, and I so, told them, I told them what a bad one I had. That was a really good car, the one we up had. And down but the, I had a really bad one. Up and down the M6 in the GTE only what two years ago. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before I was working for uh, Manor Park Classics, and I started to get paid properly. Um, yeah, uh, no, I, I had one. I bought it from Lincoln. Yeah. Seven hundred and fifty pounds. Love it. After looking V6. for about six months. Yeah, S6 yeah. V6 manual, of course. Um, and 1970. 
it was, I can't remember the reg. It's one, one I can't remember, because I've tried to erase it from my memory, to be honest. But yeah, I bought it hand-painted. Lovely. In, in blue. Hand painted really blue. nice, yeah. yeah. Uh, in, didn't didn't nice. match any colour that it was actually done in period, <laughs> just a different blue entirely. Were they all fiberglass panels? Yeah, fiberglass yeah. panels. So there's no rust on the yeah. pan on the fiberglass. They can rust underneath. Plenty though. of rust underneath. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Definitely and to be fair. Uh, the exhausts were very rusty because as soon as I got on the A1 off Lincoln, yeah. put my foot down and floored it, one of the exhausts fell off. So <laughs> so you know they have twin exhausts on uh, GT. So I bought it with two exhausts, but when I got it home, I only had one. Did the it sound one, really funky on the way back though? Unique. I think it sounded unique on, on, on the way back. It sounded like uh, an Avro Lancaster that had been... Oh, I'd pay extra for that. No, no, but it they, they, they was flying back on maybe two engines, two and a half engines. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? What Nursing my, it back home. One of my dad's pals had one, and um, it's kind of probably put me off, really, because and don't let anybody else put you off the, these cars, because they're great, but he was, he was in restoration for 10 years. And eventually he finished it and he took me out and I'll never forget it, we're going down the motorway and he didn't have great eyesight. And he said to me, I can't, I can't really go any faster because the brakes don't work and I can't see where I'm going. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably that the reason really why safe. I've never owned one. Well, do you know what? Do you know what else happened on the way home? And then, then I will, I will let us move on to. No, better, this is, better cars, it's, no it's but, all about stories. But yeah, yeah. So, so the exhaust fell off. Yeah. So I was like, oh, crikey! So in my rearview mirror, I could see like tinkering along, you know, people kind of trying to avoid this exhaust. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm not stopping. I'm walking back for that. That's the end of that exhaust. So I carried on, you know. And you, you know, what it's like when, 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 when you get a new car. You're, yeah. you're like, well, I need to find out what the performance envelope is on this car. So. I'm up the A1. Can you use the words reliant and performance envelope in the same sentence? Um, well, when, when if, if you realise that I bought the car in 1992, yes. So we're, we're in a different, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. you know, well, we're in a different time frame, really. Well, so, you know, three litres of V6 was a punchy thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it really right. was. Back, back in the day, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, after that, uh, about five, six miles after the exhaust had fallen off, Big clouds of steam, <laughs> temperature gauge had come right up. So I had to turn off, I can't remember where I turned off, came, came off the A1 and literally just had to stop it as soon as I come off. Big clouds of steam and everything. Anyway, I just left it, you know, didn't want to admit to the there, AA no. or the RAC, you know, <laughs> that I've broken down. Because I've Can I not ask a question though? As a yeah. motor trade professional, did you not yeah. do some kind of test drive before you bought this car for 750 quid? Yeah, but that was just round the block a couple of times and it seemed like it was cheap. It's it was cheap, it was 750 pounds. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, what, that looks great. It's what you did in the days. Yeah, it's, it's true, true. it's true. You turned up from somebody's house. After, you know, I was burning through cars, car after you, car after car. Yeah. You did, you turned up with your auto trader. Yeah, yeah. Under your Admag shoulder. if you were from the Midlands. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And my tool you, um, chest. Fortunately, yeah. you had a you good know, look so, at it. Yeah, you know you where you went. You or looked, not? You looked underneath it. Yeah. If you could, you get underneath yeah. it, and it wasn't raining. Yeah. You looked in the in the bonnet, mm. and then you mm. took it around the block for a couple of times, and then you started to negotiate. Yeah, it yeah. seemed, seemed and then we drove it, and then we drove them home. That's then, what we did. Yeah, that's 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 what yeah. that's what I still do half yeah. the time. To be quite honest, things haven't changed that much, even though we're in twenty twenty four. But yeah, I just let it cool down. Let it cool down. Topped it up? No, yeah, well, yeah, obviously topped it up, there was no water in yeah. it. It wasn't topping it up, need to fill it back up. Took the thermostat off. There's a trick for you. Essex V6. Quality barge. Take, take, Quality barge yeah, from George Take George's the thermostat there. off, drove home, no bother whatsoever. Never ever overheated again for the, I think I kept it for two months. Well, there you go. Mm. So there's some top tips there. Take your thermostat off if you want to go home. Other cars that I really like that I thought did very well. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen's going to go home and take his thermostat off the radiators. Don't do it. No, off the radiators. <laughs> well, at home. Yeah, do it at home. Yeah, yeah. Lower his heating belt. Car that I absolutely love that I would like to own and have never owned, and I don't know why I've never owned, Honda Integra Type R. Oh. I'd have a DC5 or a DC2. That was a DC2. Mm. We'd estimated it seven and a half to eight and a half. That car went for ten and a half grand. Have you ever driven one of those? I've driven the DC2 and a DC5. The DC2 is better. Yeah, I completely. I've, I've not driven an Integra Type R, I've driven an SI, I think it was called, from Japan, which the one we sold, if if if, if you noticed, yeah. it had those, um, not rectangular headlamps, but those kind of wraparounds. Yeah. We got the quad lamps, yeah. you know, on ours. So in Japan, they fitted the quad lamps to the SI, which was below the Type R. But yeah, I've driven one of those. It's exactly the same as the Type R, it's just called an SI. Yeah. There's no dip, like with seats, obviously, it hasn't got the red, funky red seats in it. You know, and you get them in much nicer colours, the SI, as well, instead of just like... Oh, white. Championship White, though. Championship White. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that's what everybody wants, iconic, yeah. yeah. But this kind of street sleeper is this SI, which doesn't look like a Type R at all, but it's got exactly the same performance. So, yeah, but but I like both the cars. Great cars. That, that market is, is on fire, isn't it? I mean, as a 
as a business, we're just, we need to get more of those cars. I know. Everybody wants them. If you're watching, if you want to sell anything from the 90s, late 80s, 90s, early 90s, if it's performance, if it's oh, coupe, yeah. Yeah. it yeah. doesn't seem to manual if it's manual or automatic. Because you have that beautiful little Celica, didn't oh, it? Yeah, fantastic. Which was no reserve, which yeah. I thought, you know, it might fetch two or three grand. Yeah, sorry. And right. it kept going. Because yeah. to be fair, great colour. Great history, 13 stamps from the original dealer on that car yeah. as well. But where would you find that car again? You wouldn't. That's the you question. Wouldn't. Their, their time has come, they make great, great classic cars, and I do think they're increasing in value. Well, clearly. You know, and, I, and I think they're good investments. But I think that car, if we'd have sold that car a year and a half ago, I think that'd have been a two and a half grand. Two car. grand. Yeah, two grand. But that car's Prettiest car. Pretty Prettiest much car. doubled in 18 months. And what yeah. year is that car? Uh, 92, that one was. Yeah, I think. yeah 92. See, that's, we're right in the zone for 90s, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. You know, if you've got a 90s classic, now is the time. Yeah, I definitely. Think. It's really increasing. If you want to sell it, sell it. If you want to hold on to it, it's a good investment to hold on to it. So what would we have all bought then? I tried to buy a few cars from this sale, but you know me, I am a tight motor trader. I try and get everything for no well, money. We kind of all are, aren't we, really? Oh, well, yeah, that's kind of what we do. It's, <laughs> it's the route that we've all come up, isn't it? But I think everything in this sale sold for that really lovely price point that you get, where... The vendors had a good deal because they've got the right amount of money for the car, mm. and then the buyer has paid the right amount of money for the car. Do you know what I mean? Indeed. No one's nicked anything. No. No one's charged too much. Everything. The nice cars have made a lot of money, which you would kind of expect, mm. but there's nothing kind of flown out for nothing, has it? Mm, do you no. Know what I mean? No. There was one that was handy though. That Go was on. handy. If if you're that way inclined. Yeah. Okay. You have to be that nice way inclined. Was that? that was the uh, Jaguar Sovereign. 5.3 oh, inches. Nice, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yes. Now that did that was no reserve. Did 1,100 pounds mm, yeah. on, on the hammer. Just had a new set of injectors, which we had the bill for for 1,200 pounds. So I actually said on the rostrum, you've not even bought your in or probably with the yeah. commission on. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You paid for the injectors, so you're getting the car for free. Yeah, but, so but, true. Those but, cars you, are you such know, good value, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. In terms yeah. of you know what you're getting for what Jag XJ. Yeah, they are. I mean, the, like you said, the fun you get from them. It had, it had a take. problem though, didn't it? Because the vendor had been completely upfront. Oh, yeah. Completely upfront and, and said, you know, it runs, guy. but it's a bit lumpy. I've put some new injectors in. It's not solved it, so there's another problem with it. So I know, and I was really tempted with so was I. You can get such good motoring out of them. They're smooth. Yeah. You feel a million dollars when you're driving them. They're fantastic. They really you are. Know, for, for no money, absolutely no money. Like you said, the cost of a good service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've that's, got, that's you've got so your hands on it. You know, £1,100 on a, on a plus, car. Well, yeah, plus That's a decent gamble. Yeah. Yeah, because an injector on that car. As you say, is 100 quid. Yeah. It has 12 new injectors. So yeah. for the less than the cost of injectors, you bought the entire car. Yeah, and you just don't know what what the problem is. You know, you could you could be lucky, yeah. tinker with it, bingo. Yeah. Or you could be unlucky and be another 1,200 quid in, <laughs> yeah. and then another 1,200 quid. But you know, it's it's a good gamble. But that's car roulette. Car. Do you know there's the other car? There's that no reserve CL500 that I was going to bid on. That was a nice car. That was a nice car. Very nice. And the psychology of no reserves for me, and this is what we should talk about now, because people think, don't they, if they put a car in a sale with no reserve, it's going to get given away, effectively. But actually, I find, particularly today, the converse is true, because I think we're all creatures that like to be reassured by other people. And if you're saying, well, I've got no idea what this car is worth, yep. if there's a load of people bidding, you all reassure each other, because if you say it's worth 500, you say it's worth 600, I'm not an idiot if I say it's worth 700, am I? With, no, a, with a professional auction house like this, you, you, client just needs to trust us. It's as simple as that. But equally, the car needs to be present, presented properly. If you're going to put something in as no reserve, it needs to look. It needs to look smart. Yeah. It needs to look nice and tidy, as if it's been looked after, and it will get its correct price, I think. I really do. And, and I think, yeah, I think there's some good no reserve numbers today. Yeah. I really thought there was. And there were cars that I would hope in there might be, like that little Alpha GTV. Oh, that's... That, that just gently ran up, didn't it? Yeah, and that it was did, a nice yeah. car. Yeah, it it could have yeah. benefited probably from a two, three hundred quid mm. mop and a correct, mm. maybe 150 quid worth of like reconnaissance. But then, had you done that, or whoever buys it, if they do that. I'm sure that's what's going to happen. Which I think, that. if you spend yeah. 500 quid on that car, yeah. you'd put 1500 quid on the price. Of course, you would. That's, that's my Average. point. That's my point. Yeah. Is that you need to present it well and it will get the right price. Mm. It was a strong day today. Yeah. It was a great day for, 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 all, for all concerned, buyers and sellers. But the car that I would have probably bought. Uh, would have been the Bentley Continental GTC. What a beautiful car that was. But we know that car, don't we? Because Jim, yeah. Jim, our general manager, he sold that car from new, didn't he? He did. Did he? He did. Because he was the sales manager at the time in one of my businesses, which was Bentley Rubble Valley. I know. And that's how Jim and I met. Tell us that story. So, um, <laughs> we can put some nice music behind like it. You know, young like, young like, lovers yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Well, it was Simon Thingy on Radio 1. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was right. song. Yeah, <laughs> 
So if, if I'm telling the story of Bentley Rubber Valley, I must mention my uh, my dear father who. It was his dream to to run a Bentley dealership, and he finally got there. That's a good dream. And he he set yeah he set he set this dealership up in 1999, and sadly he, he passed away in 2001 um, with a, with a, an illness that that got him very very quickly within a year. So I was faced with the decision: do I do I continue it because our main business, as you know, is actually property. Um, do I continue it or do I not? And I decided to continue it because I was also like he was where I get it from. Um, he was a car nut and, and, and so am I. So we kept it going uh, and we ran it for 10 years. Uh, and um, Jim, amongst others, was one of our sales managers. Yeah. And um, he, he was very good at his job and he sold that particular car. And that's how he's ended up back here at uh, Manor Park Classics because um, he came to the show one day and um, we've been, we're old friends. We've been friends for 20 years now. And obviously I ran that business for 10 years and... Um, here he is as our sales director, and he sold that car from brand new. I think I remember that car. I was the chairman of that business for 10 years, as, as I've just said, and I think I remember that car going through because it was the perfect colour spec for me. It was um, a, a, a grey with Portland. Yeah, it's beautiful, yeah, isn't Portland it? Portland leather. Portland, yeah. the, the yeah. Portland leather is just beautiful, yeah. just that kind of mid mid uh, mid color uh, sort of a, like a like a mushroom color yeah it was a it was a very popular popular color i think it was cumberland gray with portland i think mm. I, I, I and that's got the splits on as well hasn't it got which are splits, beautiful wheel. And, yeah. and those cars were you know in, in in the day when we uh, when bentley launched the gt the gtc it was well, the first of all they launched the gt i think it was 2003 the Bentley dealerships really did did well for those for those two or three years because it's not easy running a prestige dealership no. like Bentley and they have good years they have bad years, so if they if they launch a new product you do very well out of them and then they run that product for ten years and you really start to struggle with it yeah. because because it's old hat isn't it exactly that and these cars like Bentleys and Aston Martins, Rolls Royce, before Rolls Royce was bought was bought by uh, BMW and Bentley by Volkswagen. They used to run their models for 10, 15, 20 years because the, the R&D on these things were enormous, aren't they? Yeah. Soon as, as they were bought out, that changed. But equally, even in the early days of, um, of Volkswagen's ownership of Bentley, it was still very much, a, you know, the GT was the car and they were still running the older models as well. So, you know, running a dealership like that was a struggle, but equally, they were they were very happy years. We had some we had some good years and some great times. They're astonishing cars. I have this vivid memory of being at Bruntingthorpe, if you remember that, yeah. the proving ground. Yeah. Yeah. We were there doing a magazine shoot, and we just saw these uh, Bentley Continentals going around. So when they were quite new, and they were tanking it because that's a big Cold War bomber runway main straight. You can do whatever the VMAX the car is. You can do it there. Anyway, there's an old cafe that was at Bruntingthorpe when it was a thing. We went in. There's these two old boys there. They were, must have been in their late sixties, early seventies. We said, are oh, you Bentley test drivers? You know, he's Dave, he works in the trim shop, I work in the walnut shop. So what are you doing? <laughs> Hacking these cars around against, oh, this is our little treat, because we've been there since we were kids. Yeah. He says, so basically, the treat is, we get to come here, these are the American press cars. He says, we get to put like 1,000, 1,500 miles on them, shake all and the bugs out. out to America. Yeah, he says, we yeah. shake all the bugs out, they go back, they paint the front, take all the yeah. chips out. He says, we know, we do any snags, and off they go to America, and then they're the press cars. He says, have you ever been at 200 mile an hour on the main straight? I says, no, I have not. He says, get in, I'll take you for a drive. I took one on a skid pan. Oh, mate. One of the, 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 original, the original 2003 cars, when they were first launched, we were literally doing 100 miles an hour, and the, 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 the driver just said, right, put your brakes on as fast as you can. And, and uh, emergency stop, and the car just, just literally came to a stop like that. It was, it's they ridiculous. Were, they were an amazing thing. They were, oh, they are. They were, they were ahead of the time, at the time. And, and of course, Bentley won Le Mans in 2003 mm -hmm. because, uh, if you remember, Audi were completely ahead of the game and sort of uh, Audi teamed up with, with Bentley and Bentley jumped on the back of Audi to win that, really. But the whole Bentley, uh, I remember that time, it was probably the most special time of, of the 10 years of, of running, running the Bentley dealership was that sort of time when the GT, GT was launched, followed by the GTC, they'd just won Le Mans, and literally the whole of the factory went out to Le Mans for that time. It was almost like a, a reproduction of when Ford beat Ferrari, you know, yeah. we've all seen the GT film, haven't we? Yeah. And, and the power of Volkswagen was launched on, on, on Le Mans for Bentley to win that. 
it was a it was a, a replica of that really, mm. and they won it, and it was amazing. It was amazing to be there and to see it. So my question is then, lads, would you? I think that car was particularly nice. The service history was incredible. So it ended up being about twenty three grand all done. Yeah, twenty hammer. Yeah, twenty hammer, twenty three grand all done. Would you these days? Just say, obviously, we're all collectors. We're a bit mad. We're not normal, rational people. But as a normal, well, rational, Stephen is mad. <laughs> but as a normal, rational person, would you daily a twenty three grand Bentley? Julian? Yes. Of course I would. All day long. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. But the thing is, yeah. they're not scary. Not, I mean, obviously, your fuel bill's going to be... That same car is 250 grand. Oh, yeah. But even when it was new, um, it was house money, wasn't is it? Is it 10 times better? So 25 against 250,000? No. No. It might be twice as good because of all the tech and the reliability, etc. Yeah, you've got to be careful with a, when you're running a 20-year-old daily. But, you know, the fun you get out of them. Oh, yeah. And the fact that they're not losing any money, that's half the fun as well. But that's the you thing. Know, these things are, you know, if you don't pile the mileage on, they're going to hold the value, aren't they? Because even if you're in the specialist every six months with a grand bill or a 1500 quid bill, factor that in against the depreciation of a new one, it's no. nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. So there you go. That is absolute bona fide man maths, if you think you're doing it. Against <laughs> man this... maths. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Yeah. We're, we're not probably so, the most rational or impartial people to give this kind no, of advice, no, but that no. is our advice. But but Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I was just laughing at Stephen saying you need to be careful if you're running a 20 year daily. 21 years. That's mine. Oh, that's what, mine. what are you dailying at the moment? That's, that's the Audi, the TT from oh, that's 2003. Cool. That's, that's, that's it. 21 years. He likes it um, that much. He's bought another one and it's still outside. Yeah, but that's a BMW. A BMW? <laughs> yeah. I bought yeah. that two sales ago. Two sales ago. Yeah, it's just and you haven't used it yet. Around the back. Part I know. Back. I've not driven it. This is the Manor Park staff free story. So I've got a Bentley T1 that I bought ages ago and that's still here. Oh, is that yours? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> He's only just paid me for it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a few months ago. How rude. How rude. How very, very rude. rude. Well, other cars that we like and that did very well, what about the Emmerdale Porsche 944? Well, screen used. Yeah, I, th I think you have to ask yourself, is it the fact that it was screen used that just pushed the value of that car along? Because it was really nice, but it did have high mileage. Yeah. Great service history. Um, you know, owned by um, the film people, wasn't it? You know, still on the... And well, that was on the V5, which is so very cool, V5, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But do you think it makes much difference? Screen used car, I guess it depends on the production. Like, if it was the Morse Jaguar, oh, without doubt, yeah, yeah, you're going to pay a, a monster right. premium for that car. Could Bergerac's triumph and all yeah. that kind yes, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But they are where the car is almost the star, isn't it? So if yeah. you think about Morse or Bergerac, the car is a, almost a character within the production, isn't it? Mm. That's right. Mm. But... When it's kind of like a more of a screen use minor character, do you think it makes a big difference? I mean, I think it I think might. It's nice to have on the file. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. the provenance is is improved by that. It's not it's not everything, but it sets it apart from the rest. Yeah, it? it's, yeah, yeah it no is question. a nice thing to see. Yeah, you know, this, this was on the telly. Yeah, you know, my car was on the telly. Yeah, yeah. What was it? Yeah. Do you want yeah. to know my biggest regret? Screen use car. Okay. Well, and this, you can kick me under the table for this. So Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Not even joking, the Fiber Fab 250 California replica. So, you know the car that does the jump? Yeah. So, that's obviously yeah. that's a Corvette based kit car. And about 17, 18 years ago, I got offered to buy that car for 26 grand and I couldn't afford it. What an idiot. Well, well, I just well, well then you can't regret that because you couldn't afford it. I couldn't so. afford it. <laughs> well, but I should have just borrowed I the think money. That's irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't afford it. It's the, it's the actual what's car, car. What's that car worth today? Well, what's the 250 GT California? What's a real well, of one? Of course. Yeah, Millions. But you, yeah, but you can't compare that, can you? What's well, it? Because it's. Well, A, because yeah, no, you're you driving can. around with all the same fun of it. You can't compare that to a to a, to a a film kit car. It's got to be 100 grand at least. Oh, easy. Easy. I would say. Easy. So that's my regret. Yeah, that's that's like saying you can't compare the Miami Vice kit car Daytona with a real Daytona, but of course you can. I'd rather have the Miami Vice. Oh, I would. Yeah, you, you well, know, it's screen used. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. One, of, one of my favourite cars in, in the, that tubs. I'm looking to, to own is a Lotus S1. Uh, nice. The Spire Love Me. Yeah. Bon car, and uh, again, I had the opportunity 20 years ago to buy one of the film. They had on the set. It was filmed in, I think it was Corfu or Cor yeah. Corsica, or um, they had six of them. So, and there was a range from being the full roll car that was on that did the chase through the mm -hmm. mountains, uh, chased by the helicopter. Then there was um, one was a rolling chassis. Then they had one that looked like a submarine, and they had sort of three or four. And then they had a couple of replicas and smaller ones. This was the um, the rolling chassis, but it but they'd actually put it, put an engine back into it and made it into a roll car. So could you have put the body back onto it then, or had yeah. you got the body back on it? It, it had the body back on it. Ah. It was one of the six that, were, that mm. was used, and it was for sale. It did not fetch a lot of money. No. How much did it fetch? Make everyone really upset. I think it fetched about 40,000 20 years Which ago. Which is mad, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, you're looking was at probably three, four hundred thousand now for that. 
was that on the island you were offered that, or was it at Christie's? I'm sure they were at Christie's. It was in. It was sale. in. It was in one of the sales. Christie's. Or but this somebody's. was a, this was yeah. before it was put to the sale. This was. They were actually being sold privately. Right. I can't remember which auction yeah. house it was, but I yeah. did go down to it in 90, 1998. They had odd jobs. You remember they odd jobs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, went, I went and viewed that. Yeah. 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 Right, I know the car. Yeah, yeah. should have bought it. It didn't mm. do much money. Come, then, what's, what, come on, Jules. What's your car that you should have bought and didn't? What, screen news? Well, yeah, or not screen news, or just something that was My, just... Mine would be on Crime Stoppers if it was, if it was screen <laughs> news. It done a bank job or something like that in Darlington. You, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Are there any, are there, are there any Ford Granada, some Ford Granada. Yeah. Mark <laughs> 2 Ford bank Granada job. used in a bank job, yeah. Do you know my yeah. uh, Mitsubishi Evo 4 got stolen and it got, and it got used in three bank jobs and it was actually one of my proudest achievements. So I had a Mitsubishi Evo 4, and I tuned it, so Evo 4 is the narrow body one. You're right, right. And it, and it was very heavily tuned, it's about 350, 360 brake. This was in the early noughties, it got mm. nicked. And one of our technicians at the time, his wife was uh, the control room operator for Leicestershire Police. And it became notorious in Leicestershire that this car, because they took the rear wing off, and if you take the wing off an Evo 4, mm. it looks like a Christmas, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. It looks so like a black Evo 4 with no wing. Right, you just get, blended into the background. Yeah, yeah. And they, but yeah. you know, 350, 360 brake, four wheel drive, it was doing all these bank jobs and they just could not catch it. And Post was, offices and... Mate, yeah. I mean, it's not good. No one got hurt, I'm pleased to say, right. but I was quite <laughs> proud that no one could catch my car. So is the, is the Beetle on your list? What, the electric Beetle? Yes. That was an interesting car. So what's your view, guys, on Electrifying classic cars. Well, I'm going to go mm. first, mm. and I've written columns. <laughs> I've written columns about this as well. Here we, here we go. Well, just, put your put your tin hat yeah. on now. <laughs> In the main, it's not for me. I'm going to say if I was going to do one, I would go to Moggy. So Moggy, who did that car? To me, he is a bit of a genius. He's a very nice guy as well. He does absolutely brilliant cars. If you're going to do it, I think it's sacrilegious mm. in 99% of cases. Mm. Mm. But if you are going to do it, go to Moggy, and that car was done by. It's Moggy. a beautiful example, isn't it? It's really good. They've done it on a 65, which yeah. I think is one of the prettiest Beatles yeah, as well. Yeah, I do too as well. Because you get the longer deck lid, the longer yeah. bonnet. That was the Herbie one, wasn't it? He was a bit earlier. Was it? Yeah, so he, I think he's a 62 or a 61. Right, okay. So you get the smaller side window on right, Herbie. Okay. So that's yeah. the taller side window, being super nerdy now. But it is a very pretty car. It's a very pretty car. Like and also it's a factory steel grid. sunroof, which yeah. is such a rare spec anyway. Mm. So the shell is the perfect shell to build it into. And you could argue, no, it's not like there's not millions of them out there. It's not like they've cut up a rare car that's hard to replace. And I have to say, because I've driven that car, it actually drives better than yeah. a standard Beetle because yeah. they've left like a high low gearbox. Mm. So they blanked off two of the gears. And I can't remember if it's third and fourth or first and second, but either way, you've got like two ratios. Mm -hmm. So you feel like you're kind of stirring the box a little bit. It makes a nice noise, it's mm. 70 horsepower. Mm. So it's 30 or 20 more than the standard car. It kind of ticks all the boxes. I didn't want to like that car when I drove it at Kyman's where I it's come from, car. but actually- I think it's fantastic. Would you own it? Would you put twenty four grand into one? Well, I've been on it today. Did you? Yeah, I did. Um, and and uh, yeah, it, it went for good. It went for good money. We, we you know we did a good job for for, for our um, for our for our seller. But equally, I do think somebody's got an iconic car there. They've bought well. Yeah, well, I, I do. It's, I think it's a really really special one. And also because Moggy's work is very good, he obviously charges correctly the right amount of money mm. for it. You can't really get a car off him for less than fifty k. Yeah. So someone's had a bit of a bargain. Yeah, I have no, to say, mate, I as well. So. Did, did you see Jules whip that up? Jules actually whipped the last bit With in hundred pound increments for about two and a half thousand pounds or something like that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It was good work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very but, good work. Yeah. But some, sometimes it just needs that. Yeah. You, you, you know, once everybody started bouncing against each other, you know, I think they had three different bid bidders in the mix. So at £100, they all felt they were part of the game, yeah. you know, part of the show, part of the theatre. You know, so they're all having, I would imagine they were all smiling away at home going, oh, go on, I'll have another £100. You know, it's only another 100 quid. Go on, I'll have another. But if you live in London and you can't have a classic car anymore, hmm. you can have that. You can. Well, to be fair, in London, to, that would, even as a petrol engine, you could drive that in the middle of London. Could you? Yeah, because yeah. it's it's ULES exempt, isn't it? That's a really weird thing. Okay. That's, so, that's why you see more, more classic cars. Yeah. 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 But equally, you know, from the emission zones, it's superb, isn't it? It but is you, to run around. I'll give that you're playing like your point, to be, cause, and also, but what I like about that is if yeah. you put it on economy seven, as you call it. Yeah, yeah. economy seven. <laughs> economy seven, <laughs> yeah. 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 Are the young kids watching this? Back to Steve's thermostats now, aren't we? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> but if you put that on economy seven, you could probably charge that for three or four quid, because it's not a massive battery. It'll do like 100, 120 miles, that car. But yeah, and then, you, then you're running a beetle around for 120 miles for four quid. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of fun. 
A lot of fun. It, 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 it is like, you know, art, art becomes reality, doesn't it? It's a bit science fiction-esque. You know, like in Blade Runner, the original film? Yeah. They've got old American um, cars, haven't they, with, like, big tanks on the top, you know, that they're trying to run off, I don't know, gas or something like that. But, you know, there's, there's a retro car that's been re-engineered for the future. Yeah. yeah you, you, you know, so it's like science fiction. I, I, I've got to or say witchcraft, I like it. I'm, 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 I'm right behind it. I think... Uh, yeah, to, 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 to cut up a really rare car is a sacrilege. I agree with you on that. Yeah. But to to cut up a more mainstream car and actually turn it into an electric car, I think is a really good idea. Yeah. Why not? And what's nice is we've proved we can sell them now as well. And what's interesting is we had a lot of countries bidding on that car as well, didn't we? Oh, yeah. We, um, not just on that one, but lots of ones in the sale. We, we, and we've sold. Not, not just bidding, but we sold. We sold to uh, Belgium. Yeah. We sold to France. We sold to Australia. Um, we had people bidding in Germany today, um, um, mainland Ireland. They bought cars as well. So yeah, so quite a quite a quite a spread. Really, it's been a big day, hasn't it? Mm. What's interesting, I think, as well, so looking around the world. So the reason we're sending a lot of cars to Australia now, they've got this brilliant tax rule. If a car's over twenty five years old, then it doesn't pay. I don't think half as much or any purchase tax at all. So we're finding a lot of cars over twenty five years old are going to us now mm -hmm. because they are literally half price here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if they're nice, rust free cars, mm -hmm. even by the time they've shipped them out there, mm -hmm. they're literally buying them in for half, yeah. which is mad. And I was over in Malta. Malta. Yeah, yeah. Malta uh, last week. Mm -hmm. And if a car's over fifty year old there, you pay your shipping and you pay, I think, like a seven hundred quid transport Malta paperwork charge. And that's it. We met a lovely guy. Do you remember your lovely stack headlight coupe? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. That really nice car. So that got Merc. sold up there. Yeah. Look. Baby so that, blue. Baby blue. Baby blue. Yes. Lovely car. You put it in the auction. I did. It sold. Yeah. It it went to Malta. And it was such a pleasure. So we met this lovely guy called James who lives in Mdina, which is a beautiful walled city. Yeah. And you don't want to know how much property is in that city. It is ridiculous. Mm. It's gorgeous. Like it's an, an old Norman fortified city. That just people live inside. It's a national monument. It's an incredible place, and that car now lives in that city. Oh, that's fantastic! It's unbelievable, and, and the they're reason... really pleased with it, aren't they? Oh, he's so chuffed. I'm, I'm delighted about that. And the reason he bought that car is because his dad had the saloon, right? And he always wanted a stack headlight car. Yeah. But again, car prices in Malta are insane. Yeah. For almost everything. So if we can get cars here, and if they're over 50 years old, mm. and this is what did we sell one to Malta today? Not to Malta. No. No, unfortunately. No. 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 But bikes, they love bikes out there as well. Yeah. So More bikes tomorrow. More bikes tomorrow. Well, we do We d we do have a bidder in Malta for bikes. Do we? Yeah, at the last two sales, we have sold, um, I believe, to the same guy, bikes. Oh, well, yeah, well, that's, that's my Malta. lovely friend, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, Marcus. He's a the Right, okay, well, he bids live. So he's he's a good lad. Yeah. We love that. But bring it, I love this international thing. What's amazing because I do it, too. it used to be that we would go over to Malta and nick all their really nice cars, and now we're sending yeah. them all back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can have them back, lads. Thanks for that. It's called recycling, I believe. It is. Yeah, it's yeah, true, yeah. and, and it's, it's fantastic because you know what might not be the market in the UK because I do think the UK market has really switched to the nineties, eighties, nineties. You know the uh, the more modern stuff and the Japanese stuff. Yeah. Uh, but I think the older stuff is tending to be shipped abroad. Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm really pleased for that because it's finding new homes and new purposes in uh, in, in other shores, and that, and that's. That's great, isn't it? That's life. It is. The thing I'm getting into, I think it's because I'm getting old now, 51 now, it's kind of pre-war and early post-war stuff. Now, I don't pretend to know much about it. When we had Fuzz here, he would be very so, educational. Which, 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 which war are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we just confirm that for the ladies and gentlemen? The second talk? small disagreement. That, OK, right, I'm with you. OK. Just, was, just to make sure we're not talking World War One. No, or, no. Or the but, Boer War. <laughs> but we're getting a little bit of it in, aren't we? I mean, it's never going to be mm. the main stuff of what we do, but I do love the fact that we're starting to get this stuff like that, that Henry Bean coupe, that would... That, Tura, that was yeah. very, very cool. Yeah. The Hadfield well, Bean. Yeah, yeah, I don't know whether that'll have sold. We, we, we got a provisional I bid on that I think it's still one. available, that tonight. Is it still available? Yeah, we've, right, got, we've okay. got a bid on it. But it's one of one, though. One it's of the one. only one. Yeah. It's See, fabulous it, as well. Yeah, you know, the fabulous only condition. one. I know. If you want mm. exclusivity in your motoring, that's got to be the way to do it. Yeah. But I guess it's because it's like anything, isn't it? And if you're looking for cars to get into, if you're a buyer, it does make sense, doesn't it? There is, I think, a 25-year rule that when you get into your 40s, and you get a little bit of money, you start to look yeah. at the cars to buy that yeah. you wanted in your 15 to 20s. Yeah. And it's the, so that's why things like the Nova now and all the naughty stuff is doing really well because it's Precisely. that generation of, of, of course, of wants course. to buy an immaculate Ford probe. But there's always going to be the, um, the iconic classic cars that will sail through the generation. Oh, definitely. I, I'll, I'll tell you the difference. I, I might be wrong with this. You'll know better than me. Yeah. But I feel that if you turn the clock back 15 years, just 15 years. Yeah, yeah. More people were prepared but to... My clothes would be fashionable again. 
No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, 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 don't be silly. I do doubt that. We'd have to rewind way, way back. Rude, rude. Yeah, I hope you brought your tracksuit for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. By the way. Looking all, forward all to All I'm that. saying is jail spikes, when are they coming back? <laughs> all I'm saying is Steve, Steve Bowie's going to get his, his own back on you one day. It's going to make you wear a string vest. I think, I think, Paul, I think, Paul, you're ahead of the curve. Thanks. Thanks. It's, oh, it's Thanks. Thanks. Ahead Thanks very much. But yeah, what, what I was going to say was, you know, 15 years ago, certainly 20 years ago, or, you know, when I, when I was a lad buying me Scimitar GT and it all falling apart on the way back home, you were prepared to roll your sleeves up, get under the bonnet, yeah. and do some work. And I feel that... Today's generation that are buying the GTs. To use today? Yeah. They're not interested in that. They just want, you know, you know what I mean? They just want it there. It's mint. Yeah. Right, I can just get in it, turn the key, drive it, lovely. And there's that's nothing true. wrong with that, Jules, is there? No. If that's what they want. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's what yeah. they're prepared to spend the money but on. That's, that's great. That, that's why we're getting stonking yeah. prices for yeah. stonking Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. a really, really yeah. nice yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But then you had that Lotus. Turn there's still a market for the, for the stuff that needs a bit of a, a bit of work on, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but there's a big, there's a dr oh, yeah. dramatic there's a massive golf. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Dramatic yeah. golf. Yeah. Yeah. Talking of dramatic golfs, did you see that low mileage one? <laughs> Hey. How does he? How does he do it, Liz? You know, <laughs> you know, I set them up and you just bring them in. Well, that was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, eighteen thousand miles. Eighteen thousand miles. Four. A car that you could miles. drive for every single day of your life. Oh yeah, and, and beyond. The beyond only car the end you ever of your life. Perfect. But they say no. The, the answer to every motion question is Volkswagen Golf. Yeah. And I would wager that the Volkswagen Golf Mark IV GTI five door is mm. literally the only car you ever need. Mm. If you've got family, you can put them in the back. If you've got a dog, it can go in the boot. Yeah. If you fold down the seats, you can go to IKEA. Yes. Take it on holiday. It's yeah. fantastic it's on the motorway. Great car. You can drive it on a track day. It's the benchmark for motoring, isn't it? It's every car. The Volkswagen need. Golf yeah. is the benchmark for motoring. Yeah. What did that I sell for, Jules? I, I, was, I was trying to look there. Volkswagen Golf. So many. He's going to have a look at oh, that. There's so many. I've even got my notes here somewhere. We can flash it up across the screen now. You see, as it comes uh, up. That's what it is. Yeah, well, it's here. We've I'm got sure. a sheet. Oh, yeah, of... see, Leah. There you go. 6,200. Wow. That, that was not much money, I'll tell you now. Not for what it was. I mean, yeah. that is like buying a brand new Golf, basically. Brand new Golf, it? yeah. Well, that's why I asked you. I asked you in the sale. Yeah. How much were these new 12 grand? You went, oh, more than that, mate. I think so, they were. Yeah. But, you know, even with the commission on there, you what, seven and a half grand? How much, like how much new is a Golf today? To well, buy you can't buy new cars. Four now. What, what new car can you buy for seven and a half thousand? You, you can't, can't buy anything. No. Yeah. But also, even at that figure, that if you maintain and cherish that, and even if you did 12,000 miles a year, I don't think that car would lose an awful lot of money at all. If no, because the prices would be climbing. As you're putting the mileage on each year, it's like stepping up another price point. Mm. You're stepping up another price point, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's like motoring for free. But don't you think Golf GTI, the ultimate classless transport, you can arrive anywhere in that car? Yeah. Whether oh. it's for one of your twanky property meetings, you know, or the kind of dive bars that me and Jules go to. <laughs> <laughs> it just wouldn't matter, would it? No, it wouldn't matter. It looks not. right parked outside. Yeah, it does, yeah. Absolutely anywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you arrive, it just looks like it's an old money choice, doesn't it? It's kind of Absolutely, like you're doing yes. almost kind of semi ironically that <laughs> you know it's a good car. <laughs> Yeah. And if we arrived, it'd be like the best thing we could afford. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the rest. <laughs> but whoever well, bought that, well bought, I would say. What a great car. And we saw some good Mercs today, didn't we? Loads of Mercedes. Yeah. I still wish I'd bought that CL500 the no reserve for. Do you? But that actually made quite good money, didn't yeah, it? It did, yeah. It did yeah. in the end. Yeah. It did. Good it car, did. That. Yeah, love yeah, that car. It, it did the money. They are a great car, those. Come on, then we're all going to pick, just to wrap this up then, we're going to pick, pick one. We're going to pick one car each oh. that you wish that you were the owner of at the end of today. today. And Stephen, I'm going to start with you. One car you wish that you could have bought, sold or not sold. There's not the many not solds to pick from. No, we've not got many left, have we? <laughs> no. Um, Focus RS, the white one. Which one are you, the white one? Beautiful. Yeah, I cannot fault that anyway. Okay, one to drive, Sole one. Solica. Oh, yeah. the automatic. Yeah, the automatic, yeah, yeah. I could have just tootled around in that all day, like I said. Pretty, pretty car. I think I'm fascinated by it or God, obsessed yeah. with them because I've had two in the past. But one to keep, one to keep. Yeah. Let me get it right because I always get them wrong, these. Yeah. Porsche 911 997 Carrera 2. Yeah. One owner from new. One owner from new. Manual what a nice car. 26,000 miles. Manual gearbox. Full Porsche. Main dealer. Main agent service history. At the same dealer. Beautiful. It's only ever yeah. been serviced yeah. there. It's a great car, that. The yeah. only thing that was missing was the uh, sports, sports chrono. Was oh it? yeah, that would have given oh, it right. the perfect okay. spec. It would right. really would have almost been dreams back then. Yeah, oh, I'm not yeah. worried about that. It's no. fine. It was it's a fabulous fine. car, and okay. you know what? And and a great car, a great buy for somebody, and a great great result for the seller as well. Yeah, love oh, that yeah. one. Oh yeah, that was that, that was a lot of money, but I would have bought it. You, I you know would. what I mean? If I retail. Had been, yeah. I mean, we are fetching, we are getting retail for prices. For it is, it is yeah. good. I mean, but people will pay, it just proves, people will pay for the, the joy of having the right car in the right condition, mm. with the right mileage in history. Right. And I think people like to come here. Because the other thing is, well, you know, I've sold cars retail, you've sold cars retail, you've seen a lot of auctions. Mm. I just think half of it, because I used to say when I was a sales manager at dealership, to all the sales team, 
just give the people that come in a nice day out. Yeah. Because a lot of people, I think, if you're going to go and buy a, a Porsche, there's a lot of places you could buy a Porsche from. If you're in the twenty to forty thousand pound bracket, there's a lot of really good independent specialists out there. Of course so, there are. But we're you know on the day we're launching these cars to a global audience, aren't we? So all of a sudden they're being spread far and wide, mm. and the hit is is intense and. It just shows you that if you get the spec right, you're going to get bids from all over the world, aren't you? But also, I think this is such a nice way to buy cars. I'm not just saying that because this is our little business, but if you come here, this is, you know, particularly this man, he makes it a lot of fun. He does. It is a lot of fun. We all make it a lot we of do. fun. We do. It's not just me. I'm, I'm just the ringmaster, you know what I mean? I'm, a ringmaster? You're, you're, That's not very northern. You're, you're, well, well, no. <laughs> Sorry about that. Did, did I go all, yeah. all upper class there? Well, you get, I, I you do get thrown out of the north No, we that. do say master in, you are in the, the north east. You are yeah, the really? yeah, we do. Yeah, you are the orchestra master. of the show. Yeah, it's yeah, true. Yeah, but you're, you're, the, you're the talent. You're the entertainment. Clearly, clearly. You're the entertainment. But it, there's good crack. So either you're in the room and you're having fun in the room, or you're sitting at home with a glass of wine, you know, tapping away on you. That's a great way to back on. Of course it is. Ho hopefully they've had five glasses of wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Buy one after the first glass, not the fifth. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely Fabulous. love it. Well, my one, I think for me, it would be that E46 330. Oh, I forgot about that. The blue one. Uh, yeah. We've had so many good cars, I forgot about it. To oh, me, nice. the, the gentleman that bought that car, who I got to meet afterwards, was so chuffed with that car. Was and it? why would you not be? Yeah. Because obviously, e, E46 M3, absolute stone cold classic. Yeah. But kind of the club sport gets overlooked. It does, from the M3. Yeah, it's one and of, it's yeah. one of 600. Sorry to interrupt. Was it one of 600 they made? Yeah, it's very, very rare. I think yeah. it is 600. Yeah. So much, much rarer than the M3. Yeah, definitely. In, and some ways cooler because of that, because it's not so obvious as yeah. well. You get those factory yeah. split rims, which mm -hmm. the M3 never came on splits, mm -hmm. did it? Yeah. So, no, 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 it didn't. You no. still get the really cool sports seats. You get a lot of the stuff that makes an M3 cool. A little bit less power, but probably a third of the price. Mm -hmm. That's a no brainer for me. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, the, cool the, car. The no-brainer is, why did you not buy it, Stephen? Yes, come on. <laughs> <laughs> because it was bid well in the room and, you know, it went to the right buyer. It did, and he was mm. very, very happy. Mm. And that is one of my favourite things. You know, when you get to meet the people that have come here, they've managed to kind of achieve their dream for the day. Because we all know what it's like. Because we're all, oh, I, I we're all car collectors, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. There's no nicer feeling, either in car sales or car auctioning, is there, when someone who's had a dream, like the gentleman, Fletch, that bought that GTC, yeah. I met him this morning, just as he came in, nine, nine o'clock, he's coming to the door, and he's like, I said, hey, Flex, you know, what, what are you here to buy? He's like, I'm, I'm having that GTC. And he was having that GTC, and the gentleman that bought the Carlson as well. Yeah. I have never seen anybody's arm go up with such positivity, such fabulous body language. You know when somebody's, mm. I'm taking that car home. It's yeah. great. I'm having that. Yeah. I'm having it's great. That. And I love that, because yeah. it's clearly something that he's wanted. He's come mm. in with mm. a mission, mm. mission successful, mm. going home in the car of the dreams. And they're the right buyers it, for it. Oh, when it, they come in like that and they they want to take that car, car home that day, it's fantastic to see them do, do that. That's the magic of this job, isn't it? I, I agree. That is the magic well, of this job, yeah. yeah. yeah but, but I say it on the Rossum quite often, don't I? You could spend another five years of your life to try and find this car, and you still won't find it no. again. You, you, you know, well, life's too thing. short for yeah, waiting for things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and bored. they've probably spent five years looking yeah. for it. Yeah, exactly. So there you go, chaps. That was a lovely little chat. That was a fantastic auction. Thank we get you. to do it all again tomorrow. So don't forget, it's a goodbye from him. <laughs> it's a goodbye from him. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a goodbye to you out there, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Thank you for listening. So the please box. do uh, like, subscribe, ring that bell, and all those things like that. And join us next time. We will be talking uh, Codswallop about motorcycles with Stephen Berry off the 90s. Oh, so are we doing it again? Yeah. All again tomorrow. Yeah, thanks very much. Bye. Bye-bye.